Our brains allow us to perceive and interact with the world around us. This three pound mass of tissue contains nearly 40 billion neurons and 100 trillion synapses or connections, sending information to the rest of our body at a rate of nearly 500 messages per second. Science tells us that early brain development affects the course of our later lives. Years of accumulated research on how the brain develops and functions now informs best practices in the nurturing of children. But there remains a disconnect between this science and what is practiced in communities. The gap between knowledge and practice has huge consequences for society. If we look at the cost of health care, the achievement gap, look at crime, the problems that we face in society today, science tells us that we actually know the root of these problems, many of these problems, actually go back to early childhood. I get a lot of referrals from school for behavioral problems. A lot of times teachers refer kids due to acting out behaviors, attentional problems, learning problems. Um, although we call them school-related behaviors, lots of times they develop, um, they've developed years and years before. They just start showing when children enter school. We all know that some children get to school much more capable of learning than others and that how they arrive at school will influence how they do for the rest of their academic careers. So one way to think about uh, the development of brain architecture in early childhood is it's a lot like building a house. And as when building a house, the developing brain requires a sturdy foundation proper brain foundation needs responsive and nurturing adults. Our brains definitely need stimulation to be able to wire the brain up correctly. Left in a crib, a child cannot provide the stimulation its brain needs to form a healthy and solid brain architecture. Responsive parenting is key to a process called pruning. Pruning is how the brain creates the most efficient pathways possible. During the first year of life, there are periods of growth where nearly 700 synapses are formed a second, creating connections for language, hearing, vision, and movement. However, not all these connections are needed or are efficient. Pruning back the pathways that are rarely used allows the brain to send signals more quickly. These pathways are the foundation for later learning, forming our brain architecture. Babies' brains grow by building themselves from the bottom up. So you're sculpting the brain by the information that the brain is processing. By the age of two, our brains have already made some giant developmental leaps. Regions of the brain that control vision and hearing have already developed. Areas that handle language and communication skills, which are heavily dependent upon interaction with adults, are rapidly developing. And the part of our brain that deals with higher order reasoning and cognitive functions is at its crucial beginning phase of development. Sadly, many children do not receive the attention they need to form healthy brain architecture. By age two, we can already predict third grade reading scores. So many of the things that we think are happening later in life are actually have their beginnings in early childhood and in infancy. The ability to predict third grade reading skills at age two has to do with understanding brain architecture. The part of the brain that controls language and communication has its largest growth spurt during a child's first four years. Without a responsive adult at this age, the pruning process begins to disconnect underused pathways. This leads to language and reading difficulties later. The brain doesn't work in pieces. It works as a coherent whole. So if the foundation isn't set well, it sends poor information to those higher centers. And what starts looking like a problem in this part of the brain ends up being a problem in attention regulation and, cog and higher order cognition. So brain architecture is not set 
by two years of age. There's still a lot happening, but what happens early influences what happens later. Skill begets skill. Research shows that children who have had positive adult interaction, adequate nutrition, and minimal exposure to stress arrive at school better able to learn than those who have grown up with those factors. What adults can do to help a child's developing brain reach its full potential will be covered in the video Serve and Return.